Good day everybody. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play the board game Fireball Island Curse of Volcar with all of the expansions combined with it. Now the expansions we have are Spider Springs, Wreck of the Crimson Cutlass, the Treasure Trove cards, Crouching Tiger Hidden Bees, and The Last Adventurer. Now the object of this game is you're going to be trying to get the most amount of points and there are several different ways that you can get points in this game. Uh, one way is by collecting treasures, another is by collecting snapshots, um, and we'll go over all of that. Anyway, at the very beginning of the game, you're going to go ahead and choose one of these five adventurers to be, and you're going to place them in the little helicopter over here. And then you're going to get a reference card uh, that is the same color as the character that you picked, and you'll just simply be able to refer to these throughout the game. You also have what is called the Maw. Now, in the very beginning, um, you're going to place any leftover little treasures, um, the Lucky Penny tokens, and 16 spiders in this thing. Uh, now throughout the game there's going to be treasures added to this. Now we're going to go ahead and go over all of the cards in the game that you're going to be using. We will go ahead and start with the action cards. Um, these work in two ways. One thing you're going to do is you're going to, it's going to allow you to move a certain amount. In this case we'll move eight. Okay now the movement rules are pretty simple. You're just simply going to choose a direction to go and you're going to have to move the full amount that is specified on the card. You cannot backtrack. And then it's going to give you a special ability that you'll be able to do if you would like to. In this case, this will allow me to rotate either the tree, Volcar, or the cannons. Um, and then it also says I'll drop one fireball in the scar into Volcar. So I'll be able to do that. And there's several different types of cards like this. There's the Tiger Leap, which will allow me to use the Tiger. Uh, these will allow me to launch the two snakes. This will allow me to roll the boulder. Um, this will allow me to rotate two things. This will allow me to pour all the bees in the vo Volcar. This will allow me to draw a souvenir card. And uh, there's several different cards like this. Now in the beginning, you're going to receive two of these cards and you're going to draw back up to two at the end of your turn. And on your turn, you're simply going to pick one of the two cards to play. Right over here, we have the souvenir cards. Now, in the beginning, everybody is going to receive one souvenir card. And the main way you're going to be getting souvenir cards in this game is if you get knocked over by anything that's going to require you to give up a treasure. And these are ability cards that you can play on your turn. Uh, it will tell you what the ability is and then when you will be able to play it. And uh, you can hold on to as many of these as you want to. And you can play as many as you want to so long as you play it when it tells you you can. So here's an example. Here's the jet pack. This will tell you when to play it and then it'll tell you what you can do. Um, here's another one. This is the personal snare. Uh, it says play when someone moves past you. That player stops moving on the first open space after you. Um, and they got several different types of cards like this as well. Right over here are the snapshot cards, and you're going to be receiving these when you pass over the snapshot spaces on the board. Um, and here's one, here's Fire Flash Shoot, um, here's Dock Run, here's Skeleton Head Beach, uh, here's Volcar Point, etc. Uh, now, the cards on the island are going to be worth five points. Now, whenever you get to the Wreck of the Crimson Cutlass and Spider Springs, those cards are going to be worth ten points instead of five. Right over here are our special ability cards, um, and they're t-shirt cards essentially. What these are going to do is they're going to give your particular player a special ability that you'll be able to use throughout the game. An example is this one. This says when I pay, play a Cataclysm, I may first rotate Volcar to any position. Uh, here's another one. When I grab or steal the Golden Idol, I draw a Souvenir card. And again, there's a whole bunch of cards like this. Now, in the beginning, you're going to go ahead and draw two of these, and you're going to pick one and discard the other. Right over here are the injury cards, and uh, you're going to have the option of picking one of these up if uh, you don't want to lose a treasure to somebody. Say you got hit by a boulder or something, and then you'd have to give up two treasures. Well, instead, you can just simply draw an injury card, and uh, it will tell you what it, your injury is. Um, this one says you can't grab or steal the heart of Volcar. Uh, now, the deal with this is this is going to last throughout the entire game, and you're not going to be able to discard it. And you can have more than one injury, too. So... Anytime you don't want to lose a bunch of treasures, you can just choose to draw this, but it's going to affect your player in the game. And finally, we have the Sinister Motives card. And these are cards that you're going to hold on to until the end of the game. You're going to keep these secret. And these have goals on them. So if you're able to make the goal, you're going to go ahead and get the reward. So for example, uh, if you have more of this treasure than anybody else, you'll score 10 points. Uh, for this one, it says if you have at least three snapshots, um, you'll score 10 points as long as you make it onto the helicopter bonus. And again, there's a whole bunch of these you're going to draw one of these in the beginning and if you're able to uh, make the goal you'll get those bonus points now there are several different items here on the island these are the ember marbles and if you get the opportunity to launch an ember marble uh, all you're going to simply do is pick one and then just flick it with your finger like so if you end up knocking somebody over that person is going to have to give up one of their treasures if you end up getting knocked over on your turn you're going to have to give up a treasure to the maw 
You also have snake marbles here. If you get the opportunity to launch the snake marble, you're going to simply do the same thing. Let's just say I do this. And uh, let's say the snake marble ends up hitting somebody. Whoever it ends up hitting, they're going to pick up one of these little snake tokens over here. And uh, on their next turn, they're going to go ahead and turn this in. Now, what this means is, instead of playing a card from their hand, they're going to simply draw one of the acting cards from the deck and use that. And we also have Volcar over here. And uh, throughout the game, you're going to be uh, pouring marbles in him. Uh, you be the bee marbles. It can be spiders even. Um, it can also be these cataclysm marbles. Um, and you also have these trees and these cannons over there on the ship. Now, the trees have these rotating little roots over here. If you have the opportunity to rotate something, uh, you can choose the tree. You can just simply rotate one of the limbs like that. And what that'll do is it'll help alter the course of the, the marble. Um, if you wish to do Volcar, you can simply rotate him over one like so and lock him in. And if you choose to rotate the cannons, you'll be able to rotate all of the cannons. And it works the same way as the uh, tree roots. Now you also have a bunch of little treasures over here on they're going to be on these slabs and you have three different colored treasures um, now anytime one of your characters ends up landing on a spot where they have these little arrows over here or passes it you're going to be able to pick up one of these treasures now some of the slabs have more than one treasure on there uh, if it turns out you land on or pass a slab like that you'll only be able to pick up one of those treasures and each of these treasures is going to be worth one point uh, however if you're able to get more of one color then the amount is going to go ahead and increase at the end of the game uh, so if it turns out you say had two red treasures that'd be worth three points three reds would be worth six etc now we also have what are called unstable spaces in this game and these are going to be the bridges the ladder uh, the bridge over there and then the captain's wheel and simply what this means is uh, whenever your character reaches this area he's going to go ahead and stop his movement even if he has extra movement to go now if it turns out he's on there and uh, somebody else gets a movement um, he's going to be able to hop over them and continue going now you also have what are called caves in the game and uh, they're labeled numbers one and two and three and there's some here on the board and there's one there's some over there on the on the cryptic cutlass and there's some over here on spider springs and the way this works is if you uh end up landing on a cave um you will go ahead and roll this cave die say i ended up on cave three and i rolled the two i'll be able to go to any of the caves that are labeled two and uh, if i have any extra movement left on my card i'll be able to keep on going so a perfect example would be let's say I had two movements left, I would go over here and then I would go ahead and move two. Now, if it turns out that uh, all those cave entrances are blocked by other players, I'm not going to be able to move. Now, along with the main island, you've got two other places you'll be able to go. You can go to the Wreck of the Crimson Cutlass over here, or you can go to Spider Springs over here, and you can enter simply through the caves. Uh, now, the deal with the Wreck of the Crimson Cutlass is that you've got these cursed sapphires that you will be able to pick up. Uh, these are worth two points each, but uh, they have a unique ability to where, if you want, you can turn it in, and this will allow you to play the second action card that you have in your hand. Um, you also have the cannons over here that you're going to be the that you're going to be able to rotate. Um, you also may pick up an action card that will allow you to dump out all of the cannonballs from the crow's nest over here. Um, so all you would simply have to do is just press it down like that. Now, if somebody gets knocked over by this, they're going to have to give you a treasure. If you end up getting knocked over by, you're going to have to put a treasure in the maw. Over here, we have spider springs. Now, you're going to have four spiders over here in this little contraption. And uh, you also have a bunch of eggs over here, and the eggs are the treasure for this place. Now, if somebody gets uh, the option to toss an ember marble, there's an ember marble over here that they'll be able to toss, and they will be able to hit the contraption here with the spires. So what will happen is any spires that land in this area, you will be able to place on any part of the island, including the main island. Uh, the only thing is it just has to be an empty space. Uh, any other spires uh, are going to just stay where they are at. If there are any spires that go off of the island or in a place where nobody can move to, you'll simply put them in the maw. Now, after the spires have been launched, you're going to go ahead and refill uh, the contraption up with four spiders from the maw. If there are no spiders in the maw, then you'll just simply take them off the board and put four spiders in there. Uh, now, if you, it turns out that you have to end up picking up a spider, you're going to end up losing negative one point at the end of the game. And uh, any the eggs will also stay where they are at. Any eggs that fall into this area, they will go into the maw. 
we have a treasure here called the Golden Idol, and this one is worth seven points, and it's over here. If you end up collecting this, if uh, you end up having to lose a treasure to somebody or to the Maw, that is going to be the first treasure that you're going to have to give up. Usually, you would just be able to pick a treasure to give to somebody or to give up, but in this case, you have to give that one up first. This is the Heart of Volcar. Uh, this is worth seven points. Um, again, if you end up passing this area, you'll be able to pick it up and put it into your possession. Uh, with this, you can get this stolen from you if another player passes you on a path. Right over here we have honey pots and they look like this. Now these are worth six points each. Now the deal with the honey pots is if you pick one of these up you're gonna have to go ahead and collect a bee sting token. Now you can actually give these as up as treasures as well. If someone uh, wants a treasure from you you can go ahead and give that to them. If that's the case they're gonna have to also pick up a bee sting token. Now as far as these token goes you're only gonna be able to hold on to one of these at a time. So you know if you end up getting stung by a bunch of bees on a turn or bitten by a bunch of snakes you're still only gonna have to draw one. Right over here we have the boulder. If you're able to roll the boulders in action, what you're simply going to do is you're going to pick one of these cave entrances here and you're simply going to just push the boulder. Anybody that gets knocked over by the boulder is going to have to give up two treasures. We also have the Crouching Tiger. Um, if you have the opportunity to use the Crouching Tiger, you'll just simply put him somewhere outside the island and you'll push down on his tail like this and let go and you're going to flip him on the board. Anybody that gets knocked over by the Crouching Tiger is going to have to give up three treasures. You also have the bees. If you have a card that allows you to play the bee marbles, what you're going to do is you're just simply going to dump all of these marbles here in Volcar's head and they're going to go all over the place. Anybody that gets hit by these marbles, they're going to have to pick up a bee sting token, which is this. Now, what they're going to have to do on their next turn is they're going to simply turn this in, and whatever movement they're going to be able to do is going to be cut in half. So if they're able to move eight, instead they're going to just move four on that turn. Now we have the cataclysm area over here. One of the actions you might be able to do is what is called a cataclysm. And the deal with the cataclysm is any marbles that are here in the Scar Volcar, uh, you're just simply going to go ahead and put here and uh, let it go like so. And again, if somebody gets knocked over by this, they're going to have to give you a treasure. If you end up getting knocked over by it, you're gonna have to put a treasure in the maw. Now, you're gonna have to play the Cataclysm card in one of these sections over here. Um, and as soon as there are three Cataclysm cards that have been played, you're gonna take all those cards out and all the discarded cards and shuffle them back together uh, with the regular deck. And then you're gonna go ahead and add a marble over here to um, the scar. Now you're also going to add a marble to the scar whenever the heart of Volcar gets picked up. Once there are four marbles here in the scar, that is going to go ahead and trigger the end of the game. Now you'll note over there um, on the Crimson Cutlass that there is one cannonball over there in the mast. Uh, however many marbles are in the scar, you're going to be placing that many in the mast as well. Now there's also what are called snapshot spaces over here. And uh, there's one here, there's one here, and there are just various places on the island. Anytime you land on or pass one of those, you're going to go ahead and pick up the snapshot card that is associated with the spot that you land on. Now, once you're able to get three snapshot cards, you're going to be able to summon the helicopter. And once somebody is able to make it to the helicopter, everybody else is going to have two turns to try to get there. Now, they don't have to get back to the helicopter if they don't want to, but if they're not able to make it to the helicopter, any points that they've earned from the snapshots, they're not going to be able to cash in. As soon as they're in the helicopter, they're going to go ahead and pick up one treasure here from the mall. And also you have the submarine. Uh, whenever the helicopter gets summoned, uh, you can go ahead and move the submarine card over here to the base. And if you want, you can exit uh, the island with the submarine. Uh, the only thing with that is that you're not going to be able to get a treasure from the Maw as you would with the helicopter. Okay, so after the game ends, everybody's going to go ahead and count up their points. Uh, what you're going to do is any spider eggs that you have, you're going to take away one point each for that. Whoever has this card, this is called the Black Spot. Uh, and this is worth negative seven points. This is a souvenir card. Uh, you can actually end up giving it to somebody if you pass them. So whoever has this card at the end of the game is going to lose seven points. Okay, uh, for every egg that you have, you'll get a point. For the treasures, um, each color treasure is going to be worth one point individually, but if you happen to have more of one color, you're going to go ahead and increase it. So uh, if you have two of the same color, it'll be worth three points for the for all of it. Three will be worth six, etc. The cursed sapphires are two points each. The snapshots are going to be worth five points each, with the exception of the crimson cutlass and spider springs. Those are going to be worth ten points each. The lucky penny and the honey pot are all worth six points. The heart of Volcar is seven points. The golden idol is worth uh, seven points as well. 
well. And whoever has the most eggs uh, from Spider Springs is going to get 12 points. So you're going to go ahead and total all these up. And whoever has the most amount of points is going to win the game. In case there is a tie, uh, the person who reached the helicopter first is going to win the game that way. If nobody reaches the helicopter, then whoever is closest to the helicopter is going to win the game. And that, folks, is Fireball Island Curse of Volcar.